clairvoyant enough to see these little shadows of the electric field in this green stone. So it turned out that Kelly was the man for the job. So Kelly and John D. got together. So sure enough, if you looked in this green stone, you saw this alphabet, and sure enough, this turned out to be the origin of Greek and the origin of Cherokee and the origin of black holes. Here's Greek. And my friend Vincent Bridges, from whom most of this present history story originates, Vincent is the historian here, I am the scientist, okay? But I recommend vincentbridges.com, and we've done all the films and all the documentations for this story at goldenmean.info slash ophanim. O-P-H-A-N-I-M. So you can see all the references, all the history, all the films, the whole shtick in one place. So, at any rate, Vincent says that the symmetry of this alphabet, the way the table is arranged, was called a hypercube, which happens to be the mathematics for which John Dee is famous in history. As famous as Einstein is for relativity, John Dee for the origin of the mathematics of the hypercube. And the way the letters in this table called the Tablet of Nelvaj is arranged is called the hypercube. So if you lay these out and see the geometry of the table, 64, da da da, you see 7 spins outside and 5 spins inside. And if you read down the table, you read Zav Kiel, Zad Kiel, Kunael, Raphael, Haniel, Mikael, and Gabriel. So the sequence of the arrangements of the letters in the table are the names of angels. I mean angles. I mean both. So <clears throat> this was a geometry which was to teach us how... This is the origin of Cherokee. This is the Gabriel. <clears throat> Gabriel is the guy who spoke... To Mary, which became Christianity. Gabriel spoke to Joseph Smith, and that was called Mormon. Then Gabriel spoke to the Muslims, and that was called Muhammad. So who is Gabriel? Well, apparently we know something. What was his agenda? There must have been a political agenda. Well, it turns out... It turns out that if you arrange electric fields in that symmetry called the hypercube here, you create a centripetal force. You create implosion, you create a black hole. So the hypercube in one sense is a name for this principle. This is what a hypercube is. Six around one, seven outside converge and make five inside. So the solution, in my view, to the hypercube is the dodecahedron. So what the, the arrangement of the electric field donuts called alphabet letters, plasma residues, of the angel alphabets was just teaching you how to compress electric fields inside your mind, I mean, inside a hologram, and that would then enable you to make a centripetal force, a black hole, the only physics of creation. So in effect, the angels were saying, learn how to compress charge and you will know, learn how to bend light. Only love bends the light, therefore only love creates. Well, obviously you can see that this could become a bit of a long story. And obviously you might also notice that this is probably too long a story for tonight. So we're only going to take one part of this story. John D. <clears throat> well, I'm going to tell you the part of the story about the alphabet, and then the story about alchemy. So, I'm just reversing the parts of the story slightly, just because it's fun. So, the part of the story I'm going to tell you now is that John Dee had a bit of a fight with his financer, Queen Elizabeth, and decided that King Rudolf in Prague would better support his research. So, John Dee goes over to Prague. Remember I showed you the rose? and invented alchemy because that's where Kelly went with him with the gold, the projective powder. And um, <clears throat> now, 
the screenplay that apparently Hollywood has already written the check for, I must say, for Vincent Bridges' manuscript about this, is called Young Will. And I need to explain why. Um, while John D. was in Prague, he w was in the main court and the, uh, the Pope sent a letter to King Rudolf that he had to eject John D. because the Catholics didn't like him. So uh, King Rudolf sent John D. out to the countryside to this particular tower, which is a bit of a long story. The tower was at a, a pentagram of magnetics, implosive, and John D. set up a demonstration where witnesses from all the scientists of the court came, and he took a, a cup, and inside the cup he had red-hot mercury and um, in the mercury, if you put a, a size of about the grain of rice of this projective powder, which is a phase conjugate dielectric, inside a wetting agent, which is wax, and drop it into the mercury and then cover it and wait about mm, a certain amount of time later, um, it, it formed pure gold. And it worked so well that all the scientists of the royal court documented they were the best scientists of the day. And it was the, they, they actually did the assay test and proved it was the purest gold that anyone in Rudolph's court had ever measured. And then they sent the cup back to Queen Elizabeth. And we have all the historical documents. This is real. This is not a fairy tale. This is the real history. So when the cup got back, because the cup itself was proof that it was done, when the cup got back to Queen Elizabeth, she was jealous as all hell. Now, it, the end of this story has to do with the fact that Rudolph and Elizabeth are both trying to survive the Spanish Armada at the moment. So we're going to get back to that in a minute. But meantime, Queen Elizabeth then gets her next most expensive spy. And she had an agreement with the family of William Shakespeare, who had just uh, basically become traitors in the royal court. And so in order to save the family, young Will, <laughs> the title of the movie, was dispatched to Prague under his name as the official spy for Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth's spies always had a single name. Uh, the last name was Garland, and you can see this in John Dee's notes. This is all very accurate, extremely exhaustively historically documented material, and you can see all the references at the link I gave you, goldenmean.info slash dofanum. Anyway, so under his name, which is in all of John Dee's notes very well historically known, of Francis Garland, Shakespeare is now off to Prague. Shakespeare arrives in Prague, and I mean, John D. is literally nuts. I mean, the guy is in trouble, he's a mess, and Kelly's worse. This story has more color than I can possibly deliver in a few minutes. And you can see films about this at the link I gave you. There's several films there. But the part of the story relevant to us is the psychology of alchemy. And I would like to deliver this message for this evening's presentation. The psychology of alchemy goes like this. John Dee is there teaching young Will, Shakespeare, how the symmetry of the hypercube works. And if you draw a picture of the geometry of the Shakespearean theater, an octahedron, which is a shadow of a hypercube, and you see the angle at which you project a sequence of emotions in phase space to produce fusion, the psychology of alchemy defined as the geometry of group mind experience, in a sense. So, the day after Shakespeare writes Midsummer Night's Dream is the day, literally the day he gets back from Prague, and he dedicates it to, and 